Today we're going to be doing a review of the new SIG 516. This is the 10 inch SBR model. We're going to do a quick overview of the features of this rifle and then we'll get into some more detail later on. We got a bird cage A2 style flash hider up front, 10 inch, 1 in 7 twist, 556 five, NATO chambered barrel, a very cool gas block, milled in bayonet lug, and a loop here for a sling attachment. Very good looking set of milled anodized aluminum flip up sights, proprietary SIG handguard quad railed with multiple flush cups on it. The upper receiver looks pretty standard, doesn't look like there's really anything different about it, but the lower has a bunch of really cool features built in. The uh, bolt carrier on this guy is definitely proprietary. They are running Magpul furniture, nicer Magpul furniture at that. The Magpul CTR rear stock and the Magpul Myad grip. Let's look at some of the features of the lower receiver. First of all, they mill in some flush cups in the rear. Not on one side, but on both sides. The uh, receiver is also a little more reinforced than your standard AR-15 M16 Colt receiver. You can see these. this ribbing here is a little beefier. You have nice pictographs for fire and safe. On the other side here, we have an ambi mag release. Very nice feature. Uh, the, the mag release works very well. You can function the button easily from both sides without an issue. SIG has put a clever little device inside this lower receiver. This right here is a it's got a spring in it and it looks like it screws in to the receiver and has a fairly tough little spring in there and this right here when you put the upper and the lower together it actually acts like a accu wedge tightens the receiver up so you have to push down before the rifle will pin together and what that does is it gives it a really nice tight feel this rifle is running an H buffer, which is a heavier than a standard buffer, but not the heavy, heavy H2 buffer. The trigger on this gun feels like a pretty standard mil spec. We have a aluminum HK style front sight with a standard M4 style front post. The sight detents in the down position and just flips up in the up position. No buttons, no springs. Uh, very little to go wrong here. Rear sight, good match to the front, has a dual aperture on it. Small peep and large peep, the sight will fold with either peep up and it is windage adjustable via a detented thumb knob right here. Castle nut on their buffer tube, properly staked in one, two, two position. Very good looking milled quad rail. We have two flush cups on both the right and the left side of it. The underside of the rail are actually milled in your numbering system L30, L28, uh, T32, T28, they are not just laser burn where the white shows up uh, after burning the anodization. They're actually milled in there. That stuff's never coming off. A good looking rail right here. Has some some screws down here, Allen heads, another block here. I'm sure this is what you, they use to attach everything on there. Gas block on this rifle is very intri intricately machined. We have a bayonet lug, a spot for a sling using some type of HK hook or something like that. I don't know exactly which hook they designed this for but a nice stout looking gas block. The gas block is also adjustable. The markings on it are a little faint but they are milled in. Uh, you can see them. There is a, a line right here that indicates which position the gas port is in. It looks like a medium circle, a large circle, and then it looks like a very small circle over here that you actually have to depress this locking detent to get to. So with this depressed, you can turn it to that position right there. 
get it locked in. So you have you have a lot of flexibility depending on the cartridge that you're using and if and or if you're using a suppressor. There's also an X position right here which looks like it would totally shut the gas off so that if you needed to fire the rifle in a single shot mode you would be able to turn the gas off all the way. The bolt on this SIG is, is very highly modified. They've taken a very large piece of billet steel and milled in this entire profile. This is not welded on, bolted on, or a secondary piece. This is all one homogeneous piece of metal on this carrier. And it's also heavily machined and has all this recessing and, and weight lightening on the back, on the front, on the underside down here. This, this seems to be taken back a little further. They've really machined this down quite a bit. It also looks like this is at a lower point than this so that there's only a few contact points between the, the carrier and the receiver. Normally they do this to reduce the amount of contact between the carrier and the receiver thus reducing the amount of friction between the two. The actual bolt as it sits in the carrier has a set of gas rings in it. You can feel there's some resistance to it. A lot of the piston guns they delete the gas rings altogether and what ends up happening is the bolt just kind of flops in and out of the carrier. All these gas rings do inside the carrier is give it a little bit of resistance as it comes in and out. Let's tear down the bolt, take a, take a closer look at it. it. We have a standard cotter pin that holds the firing pin in place. Firing pin looks nice, got a little oil on there, appears to be hard chromed. With that out, the cam pin slides right out since we do not have the front of the carrier key the gas key coming out this way to block it. So you just pull this guy right out and the bolt should come right out of the, re the carrier. Again, the carrier feels nice and lightweight. They, they've done a lot of work on this. This is not a, a standard part by any means, but it does look very good. You have a standard set of gas rings back here. This bolt appears to be pretty standard. I don't see anything really different about it. Let's take a look at the extractor. Pin comes out as normal. Alright, we got the heavy duty black o-ring with the heavy duty black insert on the extractor spring. This is a real nice upgrade that they put on it. A lot of guys put these in on any rifle that they run if it came with it or if it didn't come with it. This really boosts the force the extractor is able to put on a round. The piston on this guy, after you push this detent in a couple rotations, it unscrews and slides right out. Piston system on the 516. Nice heavy duty piece of metal. Flat wound spring. This front piece comes out of here. This guy right here, I guess, is the, I guess we call it the regulator. Has a set of gas rings on it right there. When you put it inside here, it has a nice tight fit. The piston is a short stroke piston. This piston only strokes about three quarters of an inch. What I just showed you right there, that's the full stroke of the piston. So this thing will, once pressurized, will travel that far, and that's about it. When the bullet's in the chamber and the bullet goes off, as it's tra the bullet's traveling down the barrel, the barrel becomes pressurized and full of gas. There's a small hole in the barrel right underneath this hole. This, this hole will line up with a hole inside the barrel. When this is inside here, it pressurizes a small chamber right here and actually pushes this piston backwards. When this piston is pushed backwards, it travels about three quarters of an inch and what it's doing is it's pushing on the carrier there's a little indent here, it lines up nicely, it pushes back on this unlocks the bolt, bolt comes back and forth the rifle cycles. As this is coming back and forth the piston will reset back to its position so it's kind of a push, reset, back in place
Real quick guys on the piston reassembly, there's a flat right here. This flat indexes as it's going inside the handguard. This has to be face down on the barrel or when you go to put it in there, if you got it like this, it'll start this way, but it'll it won't go any further. So you got to turn it until it drops in like that. Then you're able to screw this back down. You'll need something small like a bullet or a knife to push this detent to get it fully screwed down. Because it'll stop right there, you actually need to get it to go a little further than that. Probably another full turn. So we'll grab a knife here, push this guy down. That right there should be operating mode. What you get in your standard SIG cardboard box, 30 round GI style magazine, all the parts to your Myad grip, back straps, front straps, some lubricant, little sample size, yellow chamber flag, a three pack ergo ladder rail covers in black, manuals and paperwork, a couple of wrenches, a pretty good looking sling, two point with QD flush cups front and back and a fast X in the middle not just a plain web sling, pretty nice little sling there pretty standard cable lock a small cleaning kit you got a five piece rod feels like heavy stainless with a T-bar in the back you got a bore brush and a chamber brush nice kit included with the rifle SIG's new 516 rifle Sure to be a very popular offering. Rifle looks good, feels good. I'm sure this is, this is going to be a real popular model. Comes in a few different configurations, 7.5 inch, the 10 inch model, and a 16 inch model. For more reviews, check us out on Facebook, Modern Pawn. Check us out on our website, modernpawnandguns.com. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll have more live fire reviews and reviews of new stuff, cool stuff coming out, guys.